great way to visit a state is to tour it by wineries. They are almost always miles off the beaten path. Here in North Carolina, we have wineries on the Outer Bank, in the Smoky Mountains, and everywhere in between. Just the range of topography and culture is mind-blowing as well as a huge travel opportunity. When Jan and I moved to North Carolina, we decided that is how we would learn our new state, one winery at a time, or as we like to joke, drinking our way across Carolina. That was in 2005, and back then there were 47 wineries listed on the official North Carolina wine map. Now there are over 90. Back when we started going to tasting, I swished the stuff around in my glass and I stuck my nose in it and sniffed, but I didn't really know what I was looking for or what was to be gained by doing this. I was just trying to fit in with the other wine aficionados around me, imitating what I saw other people doing. We started thinking that since new wineries were popping up everywhere in North Carolina, there must be new wine tasters popping up as well, and that maybe we could find some expert advice on visiting wineries and helping folks better understand what all this swishing and sniffing is about. The kind folks at Childers Vineyards in Lexington, North Carolina were ready to help us out and answer some serious questions about life, wine, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, Mr. Childress was a racer himself. The story goes that when he was in California and he was racing, it was very stressful racing a car, very physical, physically challenging, probably mentally challenging. So in the downtime, he would go visit some wineries in the Napa and Sonoma region. So he kind of had a passion, and that passion developed over the years, and this was a dream he had. So, I have an unsophisticated palate and it requires six steps. Six steps. Okay, what are the six steps okay. to becoming a sophisticated palate? You said you like sweet wine, and that's, yeah. you said you like the blush. Okay, so it's sweet white wine typically. Blush has got a little pink to it. Then it's crisp whites, still chilled. Then it's drier whites, such as a Chardonnay. So you go blush, maybe Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, then a fruity red. That's still Something sweet. that still has some sweetness to it, but it is a red, so you're slowly transforming that palette. And then it would be a drier red, such as a Merlot. And then the next one would be a big bold red, or maybe a big Cabernet Sauvignon. Is that like the Malbec and the Syrah? Malbec is a big red, real heavy. Some wines are so thick you can almost feel like you chew them. <laughs> and that's the that's the goal. That is the to goal. To get to where you feel like you're so chewing So you are your on wine. your way. <laughs> They say they come in and say, I'd like a tasting. I'd like to do a tasting. How does it work? How does it work? Right, so we typically will sell you a ticket and then we'll we have three different tastings here. We have a sweet one and then we have two drier ones that are going to be mostly your red wine. And we'd step them up to the bar, and of course, all the bartenders introduce themselves. We want them to be relaxed and to have fun, we don't want to be pretentious snooty, you know, and some people <laughs> feel that just by our building just being like it is, you know, yeah. it's it's very nice. Right. There so we're connection. stepping up, we've stepping chosen up. we've chosen a wine tasting. Is that uh, like a number of different? It is. It's going to be seven to eight different wines. Wow. Start with whites to reds, dry to sweet. Then why do you do it that way? Because yeah. of the palate. You don't want to get the palate confused and quite honestly after eight, nine wines, your palate is like totally blown. You <laughs> just can't discriminate very much at all. I noticed that some folks, they, they um, swish wine around, they sniff it, they various right. things. What, why don't they just drink it? Why well, just... you want to incorporate all your senses, so thank you for asking. You want to swirl it. That opens it up, it allows it to breathe. It'll improve the flavor, the finish, release the aroma. Then you want to sniff. 
And it's okay to go ahead and put your nose down in there and give it a good sniffy sniff. Yeah. Of course, I don't have any wine, so let's, yeah, let's, let's pour back some up. Wine. Let's pour some wine. <laughs> now, the grape, that is the wine. Like right. The name is the wine. Some um, uh, cab. Uh, Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc. That's a grape. That's the name exactly. of a grape. Exactly. It's a French varietal grape. So Merlot is a grape. In order to be a Cab Franc or Cab Sav, it would have to be 75% predominant of that wine, of that grape, excuse me. Really get it going. Well, and it's best to keep it down here. Let me see. Swirl it. Okay. And then at this point, I want to sniff. I want to really get my nose down in that glass. And we don't want the bartenders to step to say, okay, you smell blueberries, you smell black cherries, you smell clove. We want the individual to experience it in their own way because I'm totally different from you. My DNA is not like you. I might eat broccoli, you don't. Right. So therefore, we want the, don't want to have the power of suggesting them that they do smell this stuff because if you tell them that, they'll be like, oh yeah, I do smell black cherries. <laughs> now that you mention it. <laughs> right. So we do just say sniff. So when I smell of this, I smell of blackberry jam. No, I like blackberry jam. See, you now like I can't. Jam? Yeah, I, I can't get can't anything else. You told own? me blackberry jam, so now that's what I think. So now it's time to take a sip. Okay, and when you take the sip, you want to bring in some air. It's almost as if you're slurping in a nice kind of way. I know our mothers told us not to slurp and smack our food at the table, but here's one time it's okay to do it. let it hit all areas of the tongue and then you want to see if you have a, a long finish or a short finish is that the finish the swallowing it's what's left mm -hmm. or? and some wines actually can have a, a finish that could last up to a minute mm. so, so that's, that's desired mm -hmm. that's a desired effect <laughs> mr. Childress says he can tell if it's a good wine by the finish Slushy. Um, yes, it's the Winerita, which Chocolate Myers talks about all the time on his radio program. So we have the Winerita and we have a Peach Bellini. And it's basically just a powder mix that you mix with our wine and at home you would do it in the blender. <laughs> Dueling glasses. <laughs> this is so good. The one with the most corks is supposed to get a bottle of wine. <laughs> I said, this is so good. good, and I said, I said, no, this is the $50 bottle. It's not that good. Okay.